it's 3.30 a.m. in the morning in the Indian Ocean and I've just got out of the water because I went in and filmed the guys bait fishing and it was insane. I left London for the Maldives to film sustainable tuna fishing. It was a job for a Dutch seafood brand who sourced their tuna from the Indian Ocean. I hopped planes from London to Amsterdam to meet Tim, the other cameraman, then we flew to Abu Dhabi to catch a connecting flight to the Maldives. It took a long time to get there. Spending less than a day in Malé, the capital of the Maldives, I went and explored Trash Island, a full-on man-made island founded entirely on waste. You can find the full video on my channel. Back on the mainland, it was time for a final flight to the island of Kudu. We finally arrived. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye. 20 minutes later, I was on a specialised fishing boat called a Doni. Leaving the harbour, we sailed out into the darkness. It's about 8pm and there's a few hours to go before we reach our destination. The air was warm and the boat was relaxed. The crew playing cards and waiting for dinner. The crew's food was served out of a big pot and I don't know what it was, but I heard it was really spicy. And that the last Westerners had trouble with the heat, which is probably why we got served up spaghetti. But I'm not complaining. We'd arrived at the spot where we'd start fishing for bait and the anchor was dropped. So to catch the fish, they stick these massive, really high powered lights in the water. Two high powered lamps are swung out over the side of the boat. These lamps shine for hours into the water, stimulating the plankton and kicking a whole food chain into action. But for now... Now we wait for the bait fishing. It happens in the early hours of the morning. It's about 10 p.m. at the moment. So we're gonna go to sleep for a couple of hours. I've got my earplugs in and gonna put my little towel down. That engine has been going on non-stop and I've barely slept at all. I'm now on the floor, but I've noticed that people have started moving, so I think it's time to get the bait fish. When I saw the water, I didn't expect such a hurricane of activity. Endless circles of fish corkscrewing into the water. And then the manta rays. These guys were having a blast. One massive free lunch. Now there were tens of thousands of tiny fish surrounding the boat, it was time to catch them. I was told the crew jump in with a net and scoop them up, and I had made a promise to myself to seize the opportunity to join them. But there's a lot of dark thoughts that crossed my mind when I stared into the black water. And I was about to let the moment pass before I realised I'd never get to do this again. And plus, being eaten by a shark is a pretty legendary way to go. Paddling out to the fishermen, it got dark and quiet really quickly. I was only 40 or 50 feet away from the boat and I just focused on my camera to keep my mind from plunging into fear. In fact, when I got back to the UK, I learned there's 19 different type of shark in these waters. Back on board, huge weighted nets are being lowered into the water. The divers start pulling their lines in whilst the boat crew do the same simultaneously in order to close up the net. Beneath our fins, the mantas dart around picking off prey. The bait was put into storage inside the boat and I got back on board to find that the fishing wasn't over. The catch had been so small that they decided to change tactics and get two huge wooden poles attached to a net that they lowered into the water and catch the fish. Even though I couldn't speak their language, I could sense they were agitated, anxious that they hadn't caught enough bait. They need as much bait as possible to catch as much tuna as possible because they split the profits of the sale of the tuna amongst themselves. The more they catch, the more each person earns. This went on for hours.
The anchors get hauled in and we set off under a stunning sunrise to fish for tuna. My travel fatigue was wearing off and I realized how insane it was to be here. For 20 odd hours, I get to be in a world I never knew existed. Somewhere afloat in the Indian Ocean on a real working fishing boat. The guys began hooking up their bamboo or carbon fiber fishing poles which stand up to 10 feet tall. Some wear helmets to protect their heads from getting smashed by tuna. Water sprays out behind the boat to camouflage the fishermen and to confuse the fish. Nothing happens for a while, the men just stare into the water. Then slowly they start hooking fish. Plucking them out of the water, they're flung onto the deck where they die. This is the sustainable method of tuna fishing in the 21st century, as it has been more or less for previous centuries. It's considered sustainable because only tuna are caught, there's no bike kill or environmental damage. The golden standard in sustainability is the MSC certification, which this boat is accredited with, but some boats fish using both sustainable and unsustainable methods, keeping the catches separate. But an unsustainable fishing method used in these waters is known as a fish aggregating device. It's a floating object that sets into motion an ecosystem, then the fishing boats come by and scoop everything up with a net, killing everything in the net and discarding what they don't want. I was told 98.2% of tuna is caught this way. Back on the boat the bait was running out and the catch was meagre. The fishing was disappointing and the men had got distracted by the sharks that had followed the trail of blood. This blew my mind, seeing sharks like this was incredible. I dipped my GoPro right in. The sharks tried to bite my camera. I think these are grey reef sharks or silky sharks, but correct me in the comments if you know otherwise. After the fun, it was time to store the tuna below the deck and begin the cleaning down. The fish get hauled back out and then sorted into sizes on the deck. The catch was so small that from what I could understand, the tuna would just be gifted to them for their families ahead of the beginning of Ramadan. Arriving on the island of Gan, the average workday on a sustainable tuna fishing boat was finished. It was a weird experience, a blurry, sleep-deprived insight into an everyday world that exists so far away from my little bubble. I wondered if I could ever be a fisherman and I thought about a lot of things. I came here employed to make a video and not to pass judgement, but being a westerner with a growing environmental guilt complex, I left with a lot of questions. I'd seen these guys on the front line doing their job and it'd be easy to think that their livelihood isn't making an impact on the planet. But when you add on top all of the other commercial fisheries and fishing approaches, it makes an overwhelming impact. Considering the sustainable method accounts for just 1.8% of tuna catch, where does this leave us? I'm just a camera guy with a desire to see different worlds and have adventures, but the more I explore, the less sure I become about anything I know. Thank you very much for getting to the end of this video. I do really appreciate it. But I just want to take this moment to say, I know it kind of ended odd, right? Like, uh, it kind of feels like I am being kind of down or against the fishermen, which I'm totally not. It was just um, a way of, of the whole thing, like the whole process of, of sustainable fishing um, kind of left me just clueless really as to what's going on in the world obviously there's there's a load of of stuff that i didn't include in the video like conversations and and information that i had learned i just basically repurposed a lot of the rushes a lot of the extra additional footage that wasn't used for the main job i was there to film this is just uh, a like an insight into a, a, a world that's happening right now and it's amazing and it's uh, intriguing and it's just so different that I wanted to share it with you but it did leave me with some questions and left me wondering um, you know left me with, left wondering I just I don't know like is fishing good is it bad um, pff, yeah, comments questions below <laughs>